setting right. everything up. All right. All right. There we go. Go. Hello, Hello everybody, everybody, and welcome. welcome. I've hit the weekly at Warhammer, and that must be time, time for another, another episode, episode of Warhammer, Warhammer. Weekly. Uh, uh, joining me as always is my co-host, co Tom. Also Hello. joining me this Hello. week, it's Sam. it's Sam. I'm cheering for Tom and for Vince. I'm a big fan of the show. <laughs> it's good to be here. Thank you. Uh, it's good to have you. I'm actually hanging out with Sam. We're in the same place, so we're trying to make this work. Somebody will have to tell us if the audio is working or not. That could be a danger zone, but yeah, every time you see me look over here, I'm looking at Vince's forehead. We have, okay. we have padding separating us. Who sounds terrible? That's the question. They said you sound terrible. Perfect. Good. Uh, how is my video? Is it better or is it still terrible? Your video is probably better. I have a solution. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. We're going to go on a little walk. Oh man, Vince is cutting out of here already. I've got to carry the show. Yeah. Um, All right, so let's try now. Is there an echo now, or is that fine? I mean, Somebody I don't know. To tell us. I don't have it up on screen. So there you go. Now Let me close the door as well, further separating our voices. <laughs> the strong start to the show. Always, hey, a a plus quality material here, folks. That's that's what we're doing. Well, here's what we're going to do, Tom. You're going to start the news, so go with news, and then I'll go grab stuff. I'll be right back. Okay, awesome. So Vince is going to work on that. We're going to jump in right into the news. Um, at the top, we have our rumor engine, folks. And so now, for those that you guys can see it, it is not up on the screen. Thanks, Vince. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the man. Um, so good. So good. Um, okay, well, we're not going to do the rumor engine yet. It's probably not anything important. Maybe it's an elf thing. Who knows? We're going to move on. Um, yeah, food, it's a hat. Who knows? Exactly. So we had the uh, the New York Game Fair Expo thing. Was it New York? I don't know. Um, yeah. And we had some new models drop. Uh, Iron Jaws Warbands for uh, Underworlds. Did you, uh, um, Sam, or did you uh, see these models? I did, yeah, yeah. I was uh, I saw them the day they were released on the internet. Super nice. cool. Love the uh, the shirtless dude, and it's always good to have a variety of sculpts to pepper into your Warhammer army in the midst of uh, you know semi mono pose kits and all that. So <laughs> I yeah. love the dude with the beak, like the weird like yeah. that, that helm is just so not Iron Jaws. I love everything about it. It, <laughs> it makes me want to like green stuff a cloak around him. And make him look like uh, the like one beaked dude from like the Middle Ages plague. Um, you don't know yeah, talk about the plague doctor. Yeah, the plague doctor. Yeah. yeah. By the way, can everybody hear me? Okay, now hopefully my audio is fine now. I hear you. Yeah, I, um, I know you do. <laughs> Indeed. Um, what were your thoughts, Vince, on uh, the new Iron Jaws models? Yeah, they're fine. They didn't blow me away. I mean, but it's cool. I like the Brutes. The Brutes are some of the best models in the range. They were always some of the best models in the range. And uh, these are more good additions to that. So I'll probably pick them up and just use them as some more Brutes. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, um, the, actually, I'd use two of them as Brutes, and I'd use one of them, the sort of naked guy with his arms up in the air, as another War, war Chanter. chanter. Yep. I knew that. <laughs> yep. Yeah, he just screams to be made into a War Chanter. Um, yeah. No, I agree with that. Uh, what, uh, we also had, you know, it's like the new Iron Jaws, uh, set of releases. We also had the White Dwarf, uh, battalions that dropped. Um, Vince, obviously you've been playing Iron Jaws for the last couple of years and you are prepped on all things Iron Jaws. What are your thoughts on them? Uh, yeah, I like it a lot. Hopefully now my sound is coming in fine. We'll keep trying. We'll keep adjusting. Uh, there's one good battalion in there and there's, uh, two that nobody's going to take. But the one is actually interesting. It's an interesting alternative to mm. uh, to like the Iron Fist. You can actually fit both it and an Iron Fist in the same thing, but then you basically lose all your War Chanters, so that's a non-starter. The Boss Fist is... It's not super competitive, but it could be super fun. I'll say it that way. It's, it's a good casual, if nothing else. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's fair. That's fair. Um... Yeah, I like I love Iron Jaws. I love that they're getting some love. And so, uh, you know, we're talking about first armies and uh, I'm like my son's building one right now. We're in the process of putting together a mall crusher. 
And so, like, I always love seeing more uh, IJ stuff. I'd love, I'd love an airship. Probably not going to get that, but sure. I'd love one. Sure. Um, <laughs> I just got to make it happen, man. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, it's time to it's time to convert some uh, terrain again. Um, so that's most of our IJ uh, news for this week. Uh, we had a Lumineth article drop. Um, and so now we were talking about horses um, traveling at the speed of light. Um, and um, yeah, what, uh, you know, Sam, what are your thoughts on the new elves? I have a mixed opinion about it. Generally, I, I like it. Um, I was telling Vince this morning, they kind of remind me of a lot of the old Rackham sculpts. Mm -hmm. There was kind of a high elf-ish army within that mythos. Um, there are parts of Tesla's that I, or techless that I like, I was convinced that we're going around about people got mixed opinions on that. Mm -hmm. I love that the creature has a human face. It reminds me of a kind of a medieval demon, the way they would imagine things like what yep. about a bear with a human face and like a scorpion's tail. It's all just animal parts and human parts. Very bosh <laughs> Very bosh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. I run with bosh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm into it, man, as long as there's new models. I don't think I'm going to build that army, but mm -hmm. being more of a painter, there's a, a couple cool releases that come along with everything, so I'm always just kind of eager to see. You know, I, I like that uh, the Hollow Man the character. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so. yep, 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 yep. That's good. Uh, Vince, I know that you had some thoughts about the weird poses on the horses. Obviously, the article this week was about the horses. What were your thoughts? Yeah, I did. So so let me say two things. One, somebody in the comments is saying, Sam, that they do hear the little weird whistle. So try, like, unplugging your headset like, or and just going on your speakers or something with your microphone or uncrossing cables or something. I don't know. Play around with it for a minute, and then you'll talk, and we'll see if it fixes it. Because it shouldn't be – I think I've handled everything out here. And it's not oh, picking God. up anything. So it's something that's interference. It's not me. That's all that matters. <laughs> cool. I can't hear Tom now. Let me try uh, plugging my earphones into this. I'm going to keep plugging things into things. That's, yeah. that's what I do. I'll, I'll watch the comments. Uh, and then we'll figure it out. Because I we can't hear the whistle. So it's very hard for me to diagnose. Because it's not coming through for any of us. It's all just very normal sound. So somewhere, so it's got to be on the actual line. There you go. It's gone. You got it, Sam. Whatever you did, it worked. I got it. You got it. Yeah. All right. Let me plug back because now I can't hear Tom. I can hear Vince because he's in the other room. <laughs> One second. This is literally, this is seconds of time. All right. So anyway. Now I can hear him. Told you. <laughs> there we go. Okay. All right. uh, cool. All right. So my thoughts on the horsey poses. Uh, yeah, it's like, I knew they were realistic to have the arms way kicked out like that. Like yep. they're in chorus line. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a it's, weird, it's, yeah, it's a weird snapshot to take, right? Exactly. Like every, every miniature is a cinematic moment. Yes. And at what point do you want to capture this? You know, do you want to say, tell them to say cheese or do you want to take the picture after everyone has relaxed their faces and they think that the picture has been taken? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I yeah, I don't mind so much the one with like his his uh, legs kicked up. The Chaos Warriors have a bit of that going on too. His full extended extension of the limb. Yeah, it just feels so extreme, right? Like it's just a weird moment to capture it. Like I get it that you can watch the frame by frame, and a horse's leg does look that for look like that for a millisecond as they're running. But that's just not how we think of a horse galloping, right? It's one of those times where, yes, it's reality, but okay. <laughs> it's I, I think there's a larger trend that we've seen amongst the sculptors of wanting to like ca like really capture the mobility and the action for GW stuff. And like it reminds me of like the donkey face on the Magister, like the Magister of Hammer of Ventus Hammer Strike, like the 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 Stormcast, like the mounted Stormcast guy nobody takes. Um, and the donkey that is, it's like lips are all like screwed up. Like it's braying. Um, the Celestial Drake line, the, that's the character? No, no, no. It was the, uh, what, uh, what was he called? Was it just Aventus? Yeah, Aventus Firestrike. You're talking about the um, one on the Torlon? He's the big guy yeah. on the Torlon. Yeah, but yeah, here we go. I'm going to pull it up because this is like, I feel very strongly about this. Um, <laughs> the, like, 
I think we've seen this type of like attempt at action and sometimes they're they're capturing it a lot like more grokkable than others. That dude in his face, that donkey face. Um, <laughs> I don't mind it. Like I see what you're saying though, it, it does look like that, but <laughs> and so Ugh! it's like the dip of the lips. Sure. I don't know. Anyways, I say all that to say cool. that like there like there are some aspects that like I love the dramatic pose here of it perched but then the face there something just strikes me as a little bit off and i see that like with lots of miniatures where they're pushing the boundaries where sometimes they really get it and then sometimes i'm like it just doesn't feel right for some reason yeah i mean that dude looks like a horror movie like the the scary little girl ghost in a horror movie where her face (laughs) is like and gets real long and that's why i like it yeah it's it's like a um monstrous distortion you're crossing line between like true anatomy and animation yeah and that that's might true. be like looking you know talking about teslas or teclas again mm-hmm. he's like a castlevania boss like he, i'm i'm the monster and this is teclas and he just floats around in in the pose mm-hmm. and then he just stops and zaps you but I like that. I like where it's going. I like the high fantasy, you know, just, I like the freedom. <laughs> yeah. No, and I love that they're pushing the boundaries. And I, and we've seen that with Illumineth. Like, I'm still super mixed. Um, I've decided to, despite my love of high elves, completely, um, like, rein in all expectations. <laughs> so, yeah. like, I put, like, all of my, like, hype under a basket. And then I'm going <laughs> to wait and see the whole range. I'm going to take a look at the rules and then I'm going to be like, eh, and I'll make a decision then. Um, yeah. So, yep. Better from the top of the mountain and looking down. Then you can yeah. decide. Like I just, I've been on this roller coaster too many times. And so like, well, we'll just wait and see. We'll see what happens. I like it. It's a good attitude, Tom. Way to not build yourself up and then inevitably have the, what we call the Tom roller coaster happen. Sure. Thanks. The Tom a coaster. Um, and then, uh, Vince, you're teaching some classes or something, right? Mr. Tom's Wild Ride. I've got like 50 of these to go through, Tom. It's going to be a while. This is the rest of the show now. It's just me making fun of your emotional turbulence that happens when you when an army comes out. So I'm oh, glad to great. see this. You taking a passionate this. man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. The whistling is back, by the way. I don't know who's doing it, but it's it, back. I think it's from uh, the bounce around. And uh, Vince is in a wooded room. We have many hardwood floors and a rich mahogany here. <laughs> and uh, that could be what it is. I, I hear it too, uh, whistling around. Now it's yep. gone. Yeah, now it's gone. There's so. going to be waves of 10 people saying, it's a back, and then it's gone. It's fine. It's back. It's gone. Yeah, it's just like my emotional yeah. roller coaster. I'm excitable. <laughs> what can I say? So yeah. when, I, when I'm passionate about something, when something raises my ire, I generally do something about it. Yeah, man, you've got the flame inside. Thanks. I man. like that. It's a burning brazier for Warhammer. I'm excited about this sh- this stuff too. Uh, <laughs> I start to swear I'm becoming impassioned. No, it's good. It's good. Uh, Vince, are you actually doing the show or what's going on? Yeah, man. I'm trying to answer everybody's <laughs> things. Like now I tried to fix the light for people. <laughs> and when I tried to fix the light, then it's all dark. So I'm going to scoot around here. Jeez, people. I'm doing our, we're doing our best here. Okay. Uh, you know, trying to bring in Tom. It's really all Tom's fault. It's, it's sure. Sure, it's always my fault. What can I say? Yeah. Now I'll be lit strongly from the side, and that's fine. Hey, I'm like, I'm in a yellow submarine, so. I can have dramatic side lighting as well. There you go. Is that better? Let's talk about the Lumineth. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Uh, Yeah, many people are saying the whistle's back, so I don't know. I have no idea. Something. Something, Sam. Uh, it's not my fault. That's all I'm going to say. No, it's not. No, I don't know. It's not Tom's fault. Let it be clear. It's my house. I'm going to be on the record. I, like, hey, by the way, here's a news piece. This is the first week that we are on, um, we're on fiber for my internet. So there should be no bad, like, connection stuff anymore. Da- uh, I should not have bad inter- internet. It's not uh, that. It's got to be something to do with your, the, your headset wires, Sam. That's probably what it is. And then I can't hear anybody if I... Uh, if you unplug you sure, it? Man? Probably. All right. I unplugged my headset wires. Is there a whistle carrying through 
as my voice goes in and out of a speaker into a microphone. No. Good. Uh, there's a little bit. Hold on. I hear it again. <laughs> I intentionally whistled that time. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think it's Vince. That's what I'm saying. I think it's Vince. Hey, I see, I can't. Yeah, I can't hear anything. Yeah. D does somebody have a mobile phone next to their like computer or microphone? Not anywhere so close. It's far away. Okay. My phone's over sitting next to me. All right. It's not you, Sam. There you go. I said it's still there. I just no. I just plugged my headphone in for a second. <laughs> I think it is me. <laughs> Damn it. Sorry, right, sorry. You guys aren't hearing it when Vince is, is talking, are you? Now that I can see anyone's comments. I should pull this up live and I can see everyone's comments. Rumor has it, Nicholas. Rumor has it. <laughs> oh, geez. Oh, geez. <laughs> uh, well, I've got a solution. I can walk in there, Sam, and give you my headset <laughs> if it's your headphones. Or you could try to run it out of your speakers. You should be fine since we're not both in the room. You shouldn't need a headset. Like you should be able to unplug your headset and just use your speakers. Yeah, let's try that. There you because go. Because we're professionals. That's what we do. Uh, yeah, while well, we're playing with audio, that's what we're th because again we can't hear any of that. It all sounds completely normal to us. So, and there's no whistle. <laughs> War whistle weekly. Nice. Yeah, I think it's been. I'm going to say it. I think it's yeah, good. I can, I, can, I can see you in my living room, Vince. <laughs> Dude, let me just... Uh, should I just come in there? <laughs> well, well, then we'll hear Tom. I'll follow you around my house. The other option is I come back in there and we and we, and we go Garden State. That's the other Dude, option. Dude, I'm just going to come in there and stand next to you because I like the living room. There's a fine German Shepherd painting in the background. Mm -hmm. I'll pull that into focus. <laughs> Let's let me just come in there and join you. Okay. I think that's the right answer. It's. Did he mute himself before he left? No, but I'll mute him. There he is. Here, we'll do this. I'll take Sam. Hold on. In the hangout. No, nope, stop that. Give me my little button. No, nope, you've got to go mute yourself. <laughs> <laughs> just just exit your hangout just exit it okay. so you're shutting it all down uh thanks thanks adam i agree i blame youtube it's fantastic actually it sounds a lot better whatever just happened um okay it really was sam um okay so let's talk about um your show your we're class. joking about how we weren't gonna have to get to do this <laughs> oh, wait, here you need the other one you need this one. Oh man <laughs> dude there we go all right i love this mm -hmm. so now we're both. now we're doing the garden state now all whistling should be gone see the comments there oh god <laughs> it's gone it's fixed oh aos coach tabletop minions awesome yeah. Emily. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're super classy that's all i'm saying Look, it only took the news section to fix it to fix this, like a half hour. That's fine. Perfectly normal. Yeah, you're all welcome. Hey, I I kind of still hear it. I'm not gonna say it though. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. We're gonna deal with it. Okay, this is what it is now, people. Damn, I'm just I... a, go a ghost behind you. Yeah, mm -hmm. this will light me up. There you go. I, I told you. I think it's Vince. I don't know what it would be if it's me, but okay. Uh, let's just keep going. <laughs> Good day, Coach. I love your stuff, man. Okay, so Vince, uh, talk about your um, talk about your uh, your classes. All right, oh. sure. Oh my gosh, there's a light bulb. Now we're actually lit. What is going on here? Behold, the lumineth. All right, the lumineth cometh. Uh, I'm teaching classes the week after Warhammer Fest. Uh, it's in at Darksphere in London. Uh, would love to have people come sign up. Uh, so that would be fantastic. Uh, we're going to do two two-day classes. Uh, and we're going to focus on what, one two days going to be on characters. One's going to be on monsters. I'm also doing a follow-up class or a, a, a big night, uh, night class, Imperial night class in Michigan in June. So if you're in Michigan, come visit there or in the surrounding states. Sam, you have a class as well. You should talk about that. 
I do. You can uh, visit my big cartel, bigcartel.com slash Sam Lens Artwork. I'm teaching a class in Michigan as well, but that's in April. And I've got class in Colorado and Wisconsin, Virginia, working on one in Portland. But you can see them all listed up on my big cartel page. Awesome. There you go. So the point is, is that that's what Sam, that's what I'm doing here. Sam and I were just pl planning curriculums. That's, that's all it was. Just many days of curriculum planning. We've become close, as you can tell from this Garden State situation <laughs> we're currently involved in sharing a headset. I'm going to get Bluetooth headsets just for this situation and bring them with me. Never saw it coming. All it's right. Like, it's like the time you spent like $150 streaming our... Uh, one of our shows in mm -hmm. like France or something like that because you're tired of their internet. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. You need to get blue, Bluetooth headsets, bud. Cool. Good. 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 Well, we'll work on it. I'll work I think on that. I just need to talk more, and I think the the kettle whistle goes away the more I talk. So I think that this is just this is the universe's uh, um, way of saying that uh, I need to have a bigger role in the show. So, in light of that, uh, Vince, what uh, do you have any uh, uh, pick of the weeks? Sure. Uh, yes, yes, I do. Uh, so, for my uh, pick of the week, uh, I want to direct everybody to uh, to Sam's uh, Twitch because we all did an episode and hung out yesterday. Myself and Sam and Uncle Adam himself from Tabletop Minions. We had a fun time hanging out for a couple hours. I'll throw the link in the description, so go check that out. And I will change it so the VOD is not subscriber only after this, so you guys can actually watch it. But do subscribe. That's right. Please. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all it's right. Gone. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's gone. Oh, the whistle. Yeah. Okay. It, I don't know what I don't know what position you're in or what's going on but just hold that right there. Okay. I think I know what it was, but that's fine. I, I know exactly what it was, but we'll keep going. It's cool. Okay. It's not a thing we can fix. It's just a thing that's there. Oh. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Okay. So, uh, Sam, do you have a pick of the week? <laughs> <laughs> I want to pick you guys. I am, am thankful for... The thing that we're all watching right now, but I'm also thankful for all the other creators that it's brought to light, like AOS Coach, Doom and Darkness, Rerolling Ones. I'm going to miss some tabletop minions. <laughs> 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 yeah, man. I'm just thankful for the show. And I've, I've been playing Age of Sigmar recently, so I'm extra thankful for all the information and content. I'm 10 games in, boys. Nine wins. Nice. That's a heck of a winning streak <laughs> with Stormcast, nonetheless. So take that stats. Yeah, yeah. Bucking the trend. You just uh, don't go outside of your local meta. I mean, that's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Play people you can dominate regularly. The guys I mean, on the cover yeah. of the box are really good. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Surprise. I think the numbers are wrong, clearly. <laughs> Checks out. Um, for myself, uh, uh, Nico. Uh, friend of the show uh put out another uh part in his uh activation wars blog series on um on aos shorts site and so i want to promote that for us um it uh, it summarizes not just because it links to our show but it summarizes a lot of the um the activation wars and the hierarchy and some of the stuff that we talked about um it it um uh it just walks through a lot of the what can often be a very complicated mess of rules. Um, it brings it all um, kind of together in a pretty concise format and just updates from the prior blog. So I just, um, I can't recommend it highly enough. All right, cool. What about hobby time, Tom? What have you been working on? Fire Slayers. Always Fire Slayers. Now, uh, I, How much I, more do you have to do? Uh, like... I'm doing a lot more detailing than I normally do on these guys because uh, I'm an idiot. Um, but the uh, I have five more to do the gold on, and then I need to do. Then once I do that, it's just down to actually highlights. Um, but I'm gonna like do those five, and then do the other models I have to actually paint for Acon, and then I'll re and then I'll do final step on like final touch on all of them at the same time. Um, 
Yeah, and then I I, I got a uh, um, my uh, a gun hauler put together. Ooh, with a little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, terrain base that Vince would be proud of. Yes. Uh, oh man, point. taking why... advantage of that negative space. Yeah, yep. that's great. And I got a little, I uh, got a little uh, C4 underneath the arch, so there's a lot of neat, fun things to explore on it. So I'm uh, super excited about the story I get to tell with some of this stuff. Damn, yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah, so it'll be fun. Uh, I uh, and then I like did a. Um, I've been working with the kids this week. Uh, my daughter got her uh, tree man together finally, so she's ready to go. Oh, uh, yeah. We, got, we had fun gluing like all the little animals on. Uh, she, when she saw that they had like extra animals on the sprue for these, she's like, I want all of them. <laughs> sure. That's because she, she hasn't gone through the experience of painting them where when I had all those extra animals, I was like, nope, nope. zero of these are going on. Get rid of the stuff. I'm, I'm clipping stuff off of it. I'm always right. remo- removing parts just so I can paint it faster. Yeah. I painted right. that creature caster, uh, Dracon, who's a centaur. Mm. I'm like, I like this mm. as a bust more. I'm not painting these four legs and base and body and <laughs> done. Yeah. Right addition by so. subtraction that's right. nailed it <laughs> yeah. that's right indeed Ugh. well anyways but i'm not painting those she is so um i mean i'm excited for her it'll be her first armies on parade this year and uh she's like can i just go and like like do i have to play the game or can i just paint these things and like you know win awards for that and i was like oh you can definitely do that <laughs> <laughs> nice yes you can <laughs> Yeah, and so I was like, yeah, you don't have to play the game. It's okay, sweetheart. And my son's like, do I have to paint this stuff if I want to win? And I'm like, yeah, well, yeah, probably, actually. Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh-huh. The two yeah. types of gamers personified in their extremes in your children. Yeah, yeah. in my twins, in fact. Mm-hmm. They so. are literally both ends of the player spectrum right there. Yeah, they are. It's pretty hilarious. So, yeah, um, so I've been doing some hobby with them this week as well. So it's been nice. Nice. Awesome. Hey, Sam, what have you been working on, man? I've been prepping for Golden Demon. Um, Man, but everything is right on time. Just getting it all wrapped up. And in between there, I'm just trying to get pieces of my army painted. Trying to paint, uh, get something done before every game that I play. And it's going well. I I almost have 2,000 points painted. A functional 2,000, I should say. Mm -hmm. I have 2,000 painted. But that's not that's not gonna work. Right, you don't have to write two thousand painted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I painted Griff Chargers and Castigators. If I could peel that paint off and put it onto a <laughs> more functional unit, Just... I wish. Yeah, if mm-hmm. only. Yeah. I'm sorry, man. You painted Castigators. Yeah, I'm just like oh, it comes in the box. I'll paint it up. What What's the worst that could happen? It goes back on the shelf. Yeah, yeah. I'll just. I'll use them as something else. These are raptors now. That's sure. Absolutely. One, yes, they're still in threes. So perfect, because that's somebody you got in that box. They're just they're just raptors <laughs> with different guns. Done and dusted right there. Yep. Nobody knows what any of these units look like in Stormcast anyway, so you're good. Because <laughs> yep. they all look the same, so it's fine. I mean, you're not wrong. Two, uh, that's just planning for the future. Anytime you paint a unit that's like pretty bad right now, that just means you don't have to worry because next general's handbook or next time the points change comes around or whatever next book and stormcast will get a new book all the time. Yep, like, let's yep. be honest. They're going to get a new book this year. Castigators are going to come out and be amazing. And you'll be like, boom, nailed it. Just to scoop up all the filth. Yeah. That's right. You're ahead of the castigator know, meta. I don't know what that looks like though. But like, do they go down to 50 points for three? No, they get a rewrite. They get a war scroll rewrite because again, new stormcast book this year, Tom, they get a range yeah. increase. Yeah, but like they traditionally haven't rewritten uh, Stormcast scrolls, not significantly. Um, I don't, I don't know. know what you're talking about. That's cer- certainly they have. What? What? They, what? Uh, maybe they do D3 damage. They're explosive. Yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of different. Like they have. What are you talking about? They have rewritten a ton of War Scrolls. Like when you look at an army like Iron Jaws or Cities uh, or even I said Ogres. Stormcast. I said it's for Stormcast. Yeah, traditionally, maybe they didn't, but now they've shown they're more than ready to start rewriting some scrolls, buddy. And and they know that Stormcast's getting that point because they've been on the same scrolls for like four years. Right. So chances are they'll just treat it like a new book. We'll see. We'll sure. see. Uh, for me, Hobby Time has been also Golden Demon Prep. Uh, I had the chance to be up here in Wisconsin and, so, and said, you know, asked... Sam, if you wanted to get together, do a little paint jam, just hang out. So that's what we've been doing. 
just working on projects, listening to uh, listening to Argyle Park. <laughs> Dude, we've been going through the weirdest music. Exactly. We listened to Limp Bizkit, ironically. Mm-hmm. Just one song. Yes. Then, yeah, back to Argyle Park. A bunch of dungeon synths. The Guts theme on an hour loop, which yeah. we listen to in its entirety. Which is just the best thing to listen to. Like, the Berserk Guts theme. Would recommend. Uh, yeah, so it's just been a lot of crazy music. Yeah, and we're having painting a blast. Golden Demon. Yeah, it's good. So nice. I got my model back out to show it on camera and then left it in the other room. Oh, it's fine, whatever. I can man the controls here if you want to. That's all good. I finished up the third model of four in a unit. There you go. That's for my for my unit entry. And that's the last thing I have mm-hmm. for Golden Demon before I do the all over double check everything. A word of advice for anyone painting for a Golden Demon, which is... After you're done and you think you're done, you got your submission done, stop, walk away from it for a few days, as much time as you have, maybe maybe a week, maybe two weeks, whatever time you have, come back to it, look at it fresh with fresh eyes, and really give it a good look. Stare at it, see it for a good 10 minutes. Be honest with yourself. Take it out into natural light. Yep. Because you will miss stuff from staring at the same thing forever. Mhm. 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 It's true. So, there you go. So yeah, that's what that's what's uh there and uh I got some stuff back at home on my desk as well, but I I haven't seen that for a while. I'll get back, but this one's finished and one more to go. Nice. Okay. So, uh shall we move to the actual topic this week, which is collecting and painting your army, getting it on the table. Yay! Yay! Sure. Yeah! So I thought this would be a fun, uh, a fun show to do since Sam, you've been going through this yeah. recently. Uh, also, shout out, hey Goobertown, uh, in the in the in the chat there. How you doing, sir? Good to have you along. See, I see a lot of fun fun commentary going on there. Yep, I, I see Uncle Adam in there too. Um, we want to play at Holy Havoc later this year. He needs to pay a thousand points of a good guy army to ally with me. That's correct. I'm trying Basic, to talk basically. Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to talk Sam and Adam into being a team at Holy Havoc in later yep. in the year. It's worked. Yep. It's worked. It Sam's works. on board, so yep. now what we all have to do is pressure Uncle Adam to make sure he gets his thousand points painted. This is but, a public shame. Hold on. He asked about Night Haunt. The narrative, man, that thing writes itself. Like, sure. Yes, Adam, do a thousand points of Night Haunt. And here's your narrative. It doesn't have to be a good guy. It's uh, you have a bunch of uh, um, what's the new chamber? Um, Ruination that, Covenant. No, the the one that just came out. Uh, sacrosanct. The ghost, sacrosanct. There you go. Uh, they are redeemed night haunt. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Oh, it's, it's Casper. Yes, in the yeah, story, yeah. in one of the stories when the sacrosanct got released, they talked about how during the reforging, the lightning geists, like the soul, yeah. will sometimes get out and just be a free floating spirit. Right. Right. <sighs> I love all so, that stuff, yeah. So do Night Haunt, do it in like a bluish white ghost. So rather than doing the green, go blue. Um, mix in some lightning, maybe some purples, you're 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 golden. And boom. Perfect. You can still be death. You don't have to be yep. the good guys. You can be angry about being a lightning ghost who's been killed and reforged. <laughs> right. Adam says, I gotta be good guys. No, you don't. You can be the bad guys. You'd be a bad guy that acts like a good guy. Right. You're working with the Stormcast because they've pressed you into service. You're just waiting for your chance to escape and stab them in the back. We're totally the good guys. Promise. No, you don't need to be a good guy. Don't listen to him, Uncle Adam. (laughs) Just paint Night Haunt. Hey, I did Night Haunt with Vince's Slanesh last year. It was terrible for me. But regardless, I put up with Vince's filth. Um, (laughs) But uh, you play, you do you, friend. That's right. Heck That's yeah. right. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so I thought this would be a good topic since you went through this recently of like, you've been building up your army, yeah. right? Yep. And so let's start at the beginning because I think we did a whole show on like, what's the best first armies. And hopefully people who watch that, I'll, I'll throw the link for the best first, first armies, the most recent one we did. Cause we return to the topic every so often as things change and new armies come out. You went with Stormcast. Yeah. What led you to Stormcast? They came in the starter box. It's a good. It's a good reason. And I couldn't play. I wanted to do the KO, mm-hmm. but you couldn't do drive-bys at the time. 
Sure. I want to be Lord of the Skies. I want to set my perfect boots on the ground. I just want to blow everybody away, get all the treasure. But uh, yeah, you couldn't do that at the time. So I'm like, all right, um, the Stormcast will allow me to paint a wizard, a dragon, cavalry, and artillery, and have that all in the same force. Right. So that yep. sounds like fun. Yeah, and a bunch of non-metal metal if you're into that. <laughs> yep, if you if you go that way. Exactly. So, uh, okay. So you've got your force. You're like you're like everybody else. You you, you know they've they've picked their pony, mm-hmm. right? Okay. How did you decide what you wanted to collect? Did you just start with a list? You had whatever you had in the starter box, but there's a lot more that you have to go beyond that. Mm-hmm. Right, right. You have so many options. It's kind of the the waves of Stormcast, and I decided to go with the the Sacrosanct wave with all the secretors and stuff but i also liked the way griff chargers looked i liked neat black talons so i'm like maybe i can have a little contingent of that in my army um yeah it's it's like a really curvy path to, <laughs> like a family circus mm-hmm, panel yeah. if you will of like oh that looks cool that looks cool and uh just trying to get games in here and there um we try to get an escalation league going it kind of it petered out but now everyone's playing like sure. everyone, everyone just like it served its purpose. You in six months, yeah. Whoop, and we have all we all have armies. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just trying to add little uh, blocks to it, and it was really easy to when you have these high point value units. Mm-hmm. Like ah, oh, unit of evocators, two hundred twenty points. Bam! That wasn't forty models. Perfect. Right. I'm I'm not painting hordes of orcs like I did previously, and yeah, it filled up really quick. Honestly, I was kind of surprised. I was like, oh man, I'm not going to have everything in here. But is yeah. is T ready yet? What's that? Oh, is, is there the still T ready? I don't hear it. Yeah. Yeah. it like, it's like getting higher pitch, like the farther we go. The more that I talk. Yeah. Here, I know. You've got to interrupt. No, I know what it is. Hold on. I think I, I think feedback. I have a way to. Vince, if you, if you fix it 50 minutes in, mm-hmm. we've lost like half of our viewers. Apparently. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. It is what it is. Uh, okay, so let me see. Nope, I don't want to do the volume. Do the thing. Hold on, I'm just gonna. I'm just playing over here while you're talking, Tom. While yeah. while I'm doing this, yeah. uh, Talk about how you think about uh, setting up your. Like, how do you? You've made many new forces. How do you go and decide uh-huh. what to collect? Like, there's a yeah. lot of choices. Yeah, there are. Um, I mean, for me, like, it has to be a project that. Uh, like I've talked about this before, it has to be a project that has all the tools that I want. So like from a competitive standpoint that it's going to play like I want it to play, that's one half of it. Um, the other half is that it has to have, like I have to have a, an angle or a take on it. And if I don't have like my angle or my take, it's uh, it's like, it's a non-starter for me. Uh, you know, I talked about this, uh, you know, six months ago back at the Night Haunt. Is that I really like they really dragged on and I really struggled to get my night haunt done. Uh, I was probably born this probably nine months ago. Um, until I got like my my take, which was like wanting to do the dark elf like themed uh ghosts. And when I when I went towards that like dark elf angle, that's when I that's when all of it clicked, and that's when I like locked in and painted, you know, 1500 points of ghosts. Um, so for me it's it's a combination of both like wanting to have an original kind of artistic contribution, like having a, a concept that I want to realize. And then also it be having the competitive tools that I want. Um, so for me, those are the things that, it, that I'm, in, you know, kind of incentivized, incentivizes me for that stuff. Also, there's a compatibility, compatibility element. Um, and it, I mean, this sounds really weird, but like, if I can, if I can grow my current army and then slowly branch into another force, that becomes something that's really interesting to me. Um, like sure. I've never, like I haven't had a dispossessed army in a, in a while, like, you know, like since the very beginning of AOS, um, but given my fire slayers and my KO, like dispossessed was a natural kind of build out of my trajectory. And so then I've like, I have functionally like a city's army that I'm working on in addition to the rest of my dwarves. All right. So I like that. Uh, let me, uh, did the whistle go away at all? If it would go away as I was playing with something. So I don't know if that worked or not. 
You have to use proper punctuation if you want to threaten me as well. <laughs> <laughs> Roasted. Zing. <laughs> um, I wonder if from like my my camera still looks like foggy, like fairly terrible. I wonder if it's the compression that you use, Vince. I, I'm not compressing anything. This is called what Hangouts does. Uh, but at any rate, yeah, I think that's all good thoughts. Here's the other thing I would say about sort of collecting your... Uh... Okay, yes, it went when you dropped it down. Okay, so there's something it's picking up somewhere. All right. My house is haunted, so blame the night haunt. Oh, yeah, there you go. Uh, sometimes it went away fully. Cool. Yeah. Don't know why, but it's I, I've tried. Now it's gone. Okay, cool. Good. Uh, at any rate, I, uh, I think the thing I look at, here's what I do. Here's my process. I start yeah. out and I go, I build a bunch of different lists. Just look at the points of sort of the army. Kind of, assuming it's not an army that I just don't care. Like that I'll say, I'll play anything. I'll paint everything. Like I want all these kits where every kit is just magical because it's a limited army, right? When uh, when you look at something like Iron Jaws, there's like seven units in the whole thing. I went and got all of them because easy. Who cares, yeah. right? right. You're, I know I'm going to have all of this, <laughs> and it will all be viable at some point in time. Uh, bad. Yeah, it's it's on this end. There's something going on where something is picking up our voices and spitting it back into the signal. Mm -hmm. You know how feedback is created. You know when you put a mic and a receiver in front of an amp. Um, sure. Do you have any other... Just try muting everything else except for the one. Oh, if I mute Tom, everything else is oh, muted sorry. except that yeah. one. Don't mute Tom. We need him. <laughs> His words are taking the whistle away. All right, now talk. Me? That's a little better. <laughs> yeah. I don't really hear it there. I think that that might have magically... I've had problems with... Because you're using Streamlabs, I've had the same problem. If I just go and mic everything or mute everything, even though I don't yeah. have that audio input connected, just... Yeah. Muted all. Everything is muted right now except for Tom. It's gone now. Right it's now gone. it's gone, but if I continue to speak, maybe it'll come back. Nope. Yeah. I was hoping Don't the whistle would harmonize with me. Okay. Okay. Don't change anything. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. okay. Well, that only took an hour. So there you go. That's quick work in some some people's books, man. <laughs> This is, we're making this up as we go. Again, I could never hear anything, so it's very hard to diagnose. Like, it's hard to troubleshoot when I don't know, and I have to just... I don't feel other people's pain. It's hard for me to... Yes. See, you know what I say? I say all of this mess just makes us relatable. Sure. That's that's what it is, yes. All right, so here's the official start of the topic where the sound gets good. <laughs> Let's do that. There we go. Anyway, I build a bunch you of lists. To... You need to timestamp that in the, uh, sure. in the comments. <laughs> Whistle goes away. Uh, okay. Um, the, um, the, the basic thing I look at is I build out a bunch of lists, and I say, what of this do I actually want to play? Right? Like, what of these is interesting to me of units that I'm going to find compelling enough? Mm -hmm. so it's not about like finding like i don't generally look at like what's a good tournament power list or something like that just what of these things am i going to enjoy they're like this is the mix uh that's like good enough right that i feel like i won't get my teeth kicked in it has a bunch of units that i enjoy because like i wanted to run some so like with the city's army i'm putting together right now i wanted to have an ironclad okay well that's got to be in there right yep uh, I wanted to have some gyrocopters. That has to be in there. And then some units, I'll just be like, okay, that's kind of cool. I could do some of those. I've got a good idea. Like, well, I need a battle line. Pistoliers are cool. Great. Okay, I'll do that. It's like you can make almost anything work. So if you're just building around that, like I wanted to have a wizard run the show. Mm -hmm. That was a motivator for me. And uh, yeah, dipping into a theme, I was motivated by um, my milady doing my family tree Turns out I'm super Celtic and all that. So I was like, oh, I can lift from Matt for some inspiration and color mm -hmm. choices. Because I don't prefer the uh, the studio uh, Stormcast scheme, but I see a lot of potential in those sculpts. It's just a really simple suit of armor. I can yeah. work with that. Yeah. 
So I think that's like my, I, I think what that boils down to is in all three of our cases, we thought about it beforehand and played a strategy, right? Either you went, you kind of followed through for the units that you thought was cool and building the list words you want. Tom took a very like determined initial set, right? Mm-hmm. And I just experimented a bunch until I landed on something I wanted. Does that sound like three re- reasonable strategies? <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Here's what we're really excited about. Because obviously, Sam, you're you're well known for being a, a, a pretty decent painter. You're, you're good with the brush. Thank you. So uh, how do you look at painting an army? Because it is, I assume you do treat it differently mm-hmm. than an individual display piece or a competition piece. So how do you approach that? Well... Yeah, I'm definitely thinking about where I'm going to pull my punches. Like, what am I going to paint really well? And what am I just going to drop a wash on? I've got a special recipe for my uh, my Stormcast where I, I base coat everything. I just color block it in, airbrush upwards with uh, thin down black on the Sequitors. You know, I've got to paint the ivory cloaks in, make those look nice, make the, uh, the crystals on their hips glow. So every guy has OSL on him. My my fast is not most people's fast. I, sure. Well, that's think, no. This is a good point. This is good to explore. But you're still not painting at your highest level. You have a different. Oh yeah. Like I you just, know, you could take them farther. Yeah, I just want to have have fun with it. Like, and also it was cool approaching painting an army. I, after painting armies for other people for so long, I, I appreciate mm-hmm. the whole variations on a theme concept. Mm-hmm. Like if I'm uh, painting up my fire slayers. And I want the characters to stand out. Maybe I'll give them all white mohawks with a black stripe in it. You know, same way you saw my evocators where they've got like a darker green cloak right. versus the sequitors. My leader is going to have all silver armor compared to all the bronze armor. You see the same thing in Space Marine armies with chaplains and apothecaries having a specific color to kind of denote their uh, their role on the battlefield or wherever they come from. Right. So variations on a theme and then seeing that whole footprint laid down. That's the coolest thing about painting an entire army is just like dominating the tabletop with your scenic bases and pieces of scenery in the negative space, you know, in your yeah. ironclad yep. and everything. Yep. And as much as I talk about modeling, I, I do want to win. So it's acknowledging <laughs> the competitive side of right. things and then, all right, what falls, what's in the middle of that Venn diagram of cool and competitive Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that's where i'm going to end up <laughs> nice no i like it that's good stuff because tom you also did like some variation on a theme within your fire slayers where like the guys who had you know, you've done this in a couple different ways but like the guys who have after saves who have like feel no pains for feel no pains you yep. added like this extra free hand to every one of them where it looks like their skin is sort of like has this hardened lava on it or whatever right right like that right. kind of concept yeah it uh, it bit me in the ass of course because the first one that I did that was my Volkites, and now they don't have an after save. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and yes. so thanks, GW. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, yeah, and I've also now done it in both the Mohawks and in the basing. Um, and so before I was differentiating it using the cracked lava skin, um, but now I'm doing different Mohawks differently. Yep. And so that I'm doing like the the dual color black and in orange for my bulk or for my uh, hearth guard, my uh, oryx, which will be like the shooters, will have white and orange, like the whitish gray and orange for theirs, and then my uh, and then my pure um, uh, whatever they're called, my pure volkites just have the straight orange. And then obviously there's also a gradient in all their theirs going from like a deep red to like a, almost a yellow on the tips. Um, and so uh, I, so I've been, like as weird as it is, like their hair actually like is distinguishable between the different units. And then I've also now done it with basing where before I had kind of like the flat cracked lava um, magma basing that was matching like the tattoos. Um, now, all my Volkites are on raised like rocks in the midst of pools of lava. Um, and my Oryx 
have a different basing as well, which is like the cracked lava in the mix of like hardened stuff. Yep. And then the others now, and then my Vol my original Volkites were all just lava fields, like cracked lava fields. And so like visually, when you look at the army, I can help, you know, like, so one of the big critiques Vince had was that with Fire Slayers are army, all naked babies that look like, naked bearded yeah. babies that look like, yeah. <laughs> right, like they would look at my army and be like, it all looks the same. And so what I wanted to do was distinguish in every way possible without actually changing the models. Gotcha. Um, from the, basing yeah. to pair to all of all of that stuff, so that like visually they are distinct units, and you can see that in every aspect of the of the unit. Um, the elevated basing is a, a nice way to do that. Like I'm putting together a Star Drake. The base has to be at least like eight inches tall. Right. I, I think to like it's about yep. the the levels of power, and I also um I kind of have front rank and second rank models. Front rank they're at the base level, and the second rank models I'll put a little uh a layer of uh, cork board underneath to boost them up a little bit. Right. It's, you yep. know, like a, like a set of bleachers. <laughs> <clears throat> sure. Sure. Get everyone's no, face in the shot. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Like this is, I think the, the take home lesson here is when you're working on your army and you're trying to get it to the table, yeah. one of the things that can often trip people up is they feel like they get, it gets too repetitive. Mm -hmm. Right. They feel like they have to execute the same steps. Like first I apply this color, then I apply this color, then I wash, then I highlight and whatever, whatever, you know, how, whatever technique they have to be using. And that gets wearing to people's sort of mental endurance because just doing the same task repeatedly. Oh, man. Yeah. There were times when I'm, I'm painting an army on commission. I'm like, OK, I'm painting the color silver for the next two hours. Boy, I love painting. Right. You know, it's, it's easier for me to... Uh, Take those heavy steps, get everything kind of blocked in, and then I'll I'll pull one to three off by themselves, get them finished. They become the cheerleaders. They egg me on. There's different ways to slice that to how to like maintain a motivation. Personally, I never want to paint a hundred of the same thing right. ever again um, mm -hmm. if if I can help it. So breaking and maybe just painting something for fun or someone for somebody else, work on objectives, do scenery. There are a lot of ways to kind of chase the muse and break up the monotony. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. Like when you start varying the units, even within a unit, the bases, certain colors, different freehand elements, you know, it's like any modification that you're doing there puts something interesting in your path and gives you a chance to like not feel that creeping, crushing psychological weight of like, Oh, back to the coal mines, you know. So, so Curran, uh, Clean Brown asked in the the chat. He said, "This may be a silly question, as I just jumped back from meeting, but it's is it okay to have a variation in color in both armor and skin colors? Right, as long as they share a general theme." What I think absolutely, about? yeah, one hundred percent. I would, yeah, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, variety of skin tones. Um, on the on the color theory level, I use a lot of warm skin tones because my stormcasts generally have a cold theme. Got mm -hmm. blue bases, snow, cold green, so a warm skin tone, and then of course splatters of blood to add a little bit of warmth as well. But yeah, and, they're all gonna vary. Yeah, I think when you vary armor, what you want to do is like have some element so that's the same. So like if we were talking about, let's just use stormcast because they're easy. Like we use the sacrosanct guys, right? Mm -hmm. Like generally, they define their sort of not chapters, but co their their chambers right. by the color of their armor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you could follow that and then vary the robes, right? Like one of yep. the groups could have very like white robes; they're very plain. Some could have like bright color transition on them and be different. Like you could have that be a status of rank, like. The Sekis, the baseline dudes, are just sort of white. And then the evocators have, like, some colored robes. And then your characters all have, like, big sweeping color transitions where they go from, like, bright greens into, like, dark blues or something like that, right? Gigantic just... hats. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but the, um, point, yeah, the point is you could, you could mix things up like that. Or you could invert that. If you're using your own chamber, if you're not using something out of the book, or you just don't care, or you're a successor chamber, like, yeah, we're anvils the head. We're anvils of the... The holding a hammer, not held in hammer, yeah. right? So hammer you could, handle, ha hammer handle, yes. <laughs> then yeah, vary the armor, but then just keep the cloth all the same, or like so the, one, then the trim elements. So in like in Stormcast, one way that you could do it would be to have your primary metal the same, 
but then whatever your secondary metal is to vary it. So it's like you, let's say you did um, like a hallowed night style, like dark steel, you could vary between like gold, brass and bronze for your secondary metals. If you wanted to play around that way, um, you, you know, Curran had just said he's thinking about doing this for his uh, various like stages of decay for blight Kings. I think that's an excellent idea. Yeah. 100%. When I did, when I did my blight Kings, one set has normal flesh tones. One set has greens and one set has purples. Right. Um, and, and the, and the common element was actually the armor across all of them. I painted the same. Yeah. And so what I end up doing is if I run like a big group, I'll just mix all the colors together. Otherwise I have like five, five and 10 painted differently. And so like, even when the units are next to each other, I can tell what's in what unit. Um, and so there's a lot of different ways that you can kind of play with that. I would totally uh, encourage that. Um, the way that I did it with my first set of dispossessed that I did was that all of them had different beard colors. Sure. Um, and so I had like whites and blondes and reds and, and all of that mixed together. And um, I think that looks great as well, especially if you have very consistent elements like armor, like basing goes a long way, but if you can also have like armor or other like main color themes transition across, um, I think it's actually better to create diversity in that way. Yeah. I mean, I think people get a little too obsessed at an army level with like, well, I don't want to do that because then the thing it wouldn't look the same. Like right. it wouldn't. And, and that's just not how it works. When you're looking at an army on the table, you're three feet away from it. Right. right. And as long as you have like some dominant elements being pretty similar, you can actually vary quite a lot and have it still look really cohesive. You know, just because that's the nature of when you zoom out from a thing, you're not looking at that level of detail. Mm -hmm. For me, that was actually the problem with the Fire Slayers, is that um, I like I initially I really did go uniform, and the and Vince was right. Like you, if you looked at them at the table, like I literally had a unit of long beards, a thirty block of long beards, a thirty block of Volkites, and a thirty block of Arcanaut Company, and he's like, I can't tell what's what. Like right. they had <laughs> like one group was naked, one was heavily armored, and one had like blue jumpsuits, and he still couldn't tell. Because, like, the Mohawks were so dominating. Right. Because um, all you can see from a distance is a giant orange Mohawk and a giant orange beard. Right, right. And then axes. Everybody had axes. Some had pickaxes. Right. Um, and so, like, that's why I went with the differentiation in the Mohawk itself. Um, and actually, like, I'm, I like the look that it's generated a lot more, which is going to make me go back to my foot heroes and figure out how I want to differentiate their hair as well. Yeah. So... All right, so next up, let's talk about time. The eternal question. Like sands through the hourglass, so go the days of our army painting. So, all right, how long have you been working on your force? Uh, maybe around mid end of summer last year. Okay, so probably six like... Six months. Yeah, six, seven, eight months. Tom, how long have you been working on Fire Slayers-related chicanery? Two and a half years, okay. going on seven. No, going on three years in April. Sure. Next question: uh, Did you paint other things in between working on the army? Yes, I am always painting, and that is because it's enjoyable. Everything I don't rush through everything you do, so you can rush through something else. That's right. You got a right. deadline to finish something for a tournament, of course. But like, I'm trying to build to a functional two thousand point list, but I. I'm going to pick other things up along the way. I'm going to add to it later on. I, you know, I'll stop and paint something that isn't for gaming at all. It's just, yeah, I'm always just spending my painting time on what's going to make me happy. Yep. Yeah, I mean, the the next... When people... When you find yourself rushing for a tournament, mm -hmm. what's going to happen is then you'll rush for the next tournament and the next tournament and the next tournament, and you'll just keep getting yourself in this cycle. I'm not going to say never rush for a tournament, but what I'll say is try to avoid it, especially if it's one of your first armies, right? Uh, because oftentimes there's just no need. Like you could talk, in most cases, you could talk to the TO and say, I'm a new player. This is my first tournament. My army's not quite ready yet. Is it okay if I come? I'd really like to still play. And... Most TOs who are generally really good people and want people to come to their tournaments will be like, 
yeah, you know, you're not going to do great on paint score, but I understand that's not why you're coming anyways. You're coming because you want to play the game and understand what the tournaments are like. So sure, come on in. Yeah, right? exactly. Just getting your little coin into the painting competition isn't exactly what it's all about. Right. <clears throat> so, like, there's no need to rush yourself when realistically you could uh, you could do exactly that thing. And then instead, you keep taking your time, you work on stuff. And the other point there, because, Tom, you haven't only worked on Fire Slayers for the past no. two and a half years. You've done stuff all over the place in between as well. Yeah, like I've, in the meantime, I've mixed in, obviously, in the last nine months, I did Night Haunt, did 1,500 points of Night Haunt. Uh, the last year, I took a pretty long hiatus and did my Daughters of Cain army. So I did about 3,000 points of Daughters of Cain. Um, and then, and then mixed in the middle of that, I did almost 1,000 points, 1,500 points of Stormcast. Um, so like I've I've mixed in quite a bit of stuff. And like one thing that's helped me with the this Dwarf army is that it's not just Fire Slayers. Like right. it's murdered out as KO, and then now I'm doing pure Fire Slayers. And in the middle of this, I mixed in a bunch of Dispossessed. And so I actually have like three very viable armies between KO, Fire Slayers, and Temp uh, Cities of Sigmar um, that I can kind of mix and match um, amongst kind of my play. Yeah. And I think that's another good point. Again, it's all, I, I think painting an army and getting your army up and, and on the table, it's an endurance thing, right? Even if you're being very simple, I'm not talking about like you're painting the whole army to, to, to competition level. I just mean like there's an endurance element to it. You've got to yep. stick at a, a singular project. It's a big project. That doesn't mean you have to do it all at once. Because again, there's really no reason. There's no pressure in the world that's worth being that kind of frustrated over. So if you get to a point where like, well, I was varying the units, but now I just, you know, it's just not what's catching me right now. I don't want to work on a unit. Mm -hmm. Cool. Put that unit to the side, and I've talked about it before, have at least like two projects you're working on and just go do something else. Build a unit for something else, build something different. Like maybe you're thinking about a future army and so you want to try out a test paint scheme for that future army. Cool, you know, give that a shot. Or or assemble some cool conversion or go into build mode on on something. And like if, if you got if you got a little shelf of shame, put some stuff together. Like yep. any of that's fine. Assembly time, man, it's the best break from painting. And just still so spending good. time hobbying. Like Vince and I were painting yesterday. I'm working on an entry. I'll pivot and then I'm working on my Star Drake a little bit uh -huh. while, while I was streaming and stuff. Yeah, man. Just a little bit of variety to keep things spicy. I love building. It's like so cathartic. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I, just, I have to be careful because otherwise, like, you know, you can obviously build way too much. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. But yeah, you don't have to get wrapped up in this clean plate club thing. Like, oh, someone gave me a birthday cake. I need to eat the entire thing in one <laughs> evening right now. Get this army done and I don't spend a second of time refining something I'm having a problem with. Yeah. Yeah. Like set realistic goals for yourself when you're, when you're working through this stuff. There's no reason you have to be under somebody else's time frame that you have to feel like you've got X months. If you're playing down at the local shop... No one is going to care that you have unpainted models if every couple weeks when you show up to play, another unit is painted or another couple models are painted. <laughs> They're going to think that's wonderful. Like, I've seen this yep. happen so many times where players just like a little less gray is on the table every time. That's my approach. Yep. Yeah. There's nothing yep. wrong with that. And you can psychologically dominate somebody by slowly painting something while they aren't painting anything. It's just coming <laughs> along. And you've got fully finished models next to the unfinished models. And then you come back and, yeah, you're like, you see where this yep. is going? There's the game outside of the game. that That's what I'm most interested in. And that's talking trash and the psychological domination through artwork. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. You, you need to impress her. You want to make them feel bad for still having their army unpainted. Yeah, what are you like, waiting for, man? What are you doing, man? Look at how I'm crushing you. Look my, at this. My yeah, favorite here, I'll buy part... a pot upon contrast. There you go. <laughs> my favorite part of going to events is having people stop and, like, have to take a double take. And they're like, wow, Tom, like, you're a really good painter. <laughs> like, I thought you were just competitive. 
Yeah, right? I thought you only won Best Sportsman, but turns out you're also a really good painter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who you've also won awards for. Tom is the farthest away from Best Sportsman you could get. Playing Tom is, a, is an endurance match all its own. Not unlike painting an army. <sighs> hey, let me just say this. I don't think that there's ever an event that I've been to that I haven't gotten at least one sports vote event. <laughs> the same? No, I often don't get Best Sports votes. So they get, that, whole, that whole being on the internet gets you sports votes things, I don't believe it. Either that or I must be a really mean person. I don't think I'm mean. I don't think you're mean. I think it's everyone else. Sure. It's, it's never yes. your own fault. Clearly, it is everyone else that is wrong, not me. I'm fine. <gasps> What's wrong with you people? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, I mean, hey, let me just say this. That teams at Akon last year, out of 150 teams, we placed third. There you go. That's right. Now, that was Solid. wrong. Solid. That was Rob Thimes carrying our entire team. Sure, oh, yes. He third. <laughs> sure, he, you had a you had an extremely gregarious partner. All right. So okay, so you're you're moving along. You're painting. I want to, there's there's a pitfall here. I want to, I want to talk about because I know this is a common thing, and I want to know how you gentlemen deal with it because you because because we talked about splitting up projects, right? Like we said, yes, it's okay. You don't have to keep just working on the thing. That's fine, man. You do you. Follow your muse. Love life. Wander. Yeah. Wander around. Okay. So now, how do we tackle the opposite side of that problem? How am I going to actually get R done? <laughs> right. Um. You, you've you wandered too far, right? When people keep the, the project, yeah, you know, a dream ADD, a dream. right? Yes. How do you um, get back? Just like building an army, you need to make a list. Okay. Uh, that's a good idea. Um, could, I book, yep. I book events <laughs> in the future. I do. I do. I do. Like I'm like okay. Um, I'm going to. I'm. I'm going to Holy Wars. That means that I have to have the competitive army I'm working on done in three months, or six months, or nine months, or whatever. Yeah. Like book something right. far away that right. you know then, is going to give you enough time. And then what it happens is I've painted enough to look at my army and go, okay. So from a project planning standpoint. That means that I need to have this done by this date, this done by this date, yada, yada. And then it, you know, I can track my progress and, okay, I need to put in an extra day here of painting or whatever in order to, to play catch up. But for me, like uh, up until this year, and partially because of just schoolwork has dominated my schedule, like that events have actually dominated and dictated my painting schedule. Um, such like, so I haven't painted enough like full armies this year, like I normally would. Um, but but normally I would start an entire new army and paint basically 3000 points by the end of the year. Yeah. Um, and you, you just make a little step-by-step -step list for me, especially when I'm getting something done for a competition or either way, it's, I just need to check this off and I'm sitting down tonight and I'm not getting up until all of the flesh is base coated because yep. your brain is going to tell your body that you're tired before you you're out of energy because it's a survival mechanism fear is the mind killer yes exactly i will face my fear i will let it pass through me and when yep. it's gone only i will remain i guarantee you have more reps in the tank keep on lifting keep mm -hmm. going and yeah the brain is going to tell you that it's the most useful organ in the body but that's the organ telling you that it's useful yeah what does it know you see mm -hmm. the heart is what matters <laughs> there you go there you go <laughs> but uh yeah yeah anyways make a checklist get it done and put you have to put the time into it people are like Oh, there was to be a magic word that makes you faster or something. And, uh -huh. you know, I, I saw you you answering this on a recent, uh, it's probably like last week's episode. You're like, well, it's easy. I paint four hours a night and 16 hours on the weekends. It's like, I'm not actually faster. It's where I'm placing my time. You know, what's, right. what's more important, drinking Tuesday through Sunday or maybe just painting Monday through Friday right. for a little while. Right. So, so let me let me give you two psychological tricks, and I'll I'll see what you gentlemen think of them. All right. Okay. Here's psychological trick number one, and you you alluded to it, which is micro goals. What's intimidating is finishing the army or the unit or even the figure. All of those can seem like mountains too tall to climb. Mm -hmm. You mentioned like I'm going to sit down and do the base coat on the skin. Right. So instead of thinking of the project as I have to do the whole project, right, uh, set a micro goal. I'm going to do this cloak. That's it. Yep. Right. That's it. That If I paint this cloak, I'm successful tonight. 
That's what I'm going to do. And there is more paint on my army after I'm done with that than there was before that. Yep. Any step forward is a good step forward. And the more you start taking those small steps, because you'll find sometimes you sit down and go, all right, I'm just going to paint the cloak. I just need to get a cloak done. I need to turn a cloak from primed to red. That's it. Right? And then you'll suddenly look up and realize you've also done the boots and the belt and some armor. And you're like, oh, okay, I guess that guy's done. Sometimes that'll happen. Not every time. Sometimes you'll paint the cloak and be like, okay, did it. Done. Put it away. I think micro goals are hugely important. Like... That's my one of my tricks for competition pieces is I sit down and go, because that is a massive project in itself, right? I sit down and go, okay, today I'm just going to work on hair, right? Yeah. Or something like that. You can do um, the same thing with an army. I think uh, something like a podcast or an audiobook can help with the, the time management as well. Yep. So you're going to be more prone to searching for distractions. Yeah, and I, I sat down and painted for an hour, but what I really did was, uh, you know, look at Instagram for, for 30 minutes. Like you, that's a good way to set your clock is just pull out a podcast, listen to uh, Warhammer Weekly. I sit down and paint with you guys every Wednesday. I'm it's out awesome. there painting. It keeps me in the chair. Um, yeah, that's yeah. A, it's a good way to just stay on pace uh, and manage your time. Related to that, I would say is also doing um, is having a painting community. Sure, other people who are somebody to somebody to to, uh, to spot you. Right. Like, so regularly, like Vince and I will often like open up a hangout and just like hang out and talk and paint together. I know there are numerous like Skype groups around um, where like just like if it's just you and them talking and hanging out and socializing as you paint. And that will often like help with the, like some of us are legitimate like extroverts, like raging mm -hmm. extroverts. And so like sitting alone painting quietly in the basement can be hard. Um, and so one way that I, I've, I fix that is I do like Skypes and other like hangouts like that, where um, there's somebody with me to interact as I, as I paint. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah like I want to, I want to shout out, I want to shout out uh, Jaheli in the comments here. He said new to painting and I'm just painting this figure a little every day. Yesterday I base coated the metal parts of the fi of the armor. Today I'm cleaning it up and shading it. Yes, exactly. Perfect. That's that's amazing. One brick at a time. Yeah, exactly, cuz then you're still you are making forward progress. And if you just keep doing that, yep. you will suddenly have a whole army done and you won't even remember the thousands of little steps you took along the way. It'll just happen, right? Here's my second trick. How much you think of this one? I call this the ooh piece of candy strategy. Okay. Yeah, I like it already. The ooh piece of candy strategy is, oh man, I'm so excited. I got this new fig, this new thing. I really want to paint. Uh, I really, really, really want to do this. Okay. But before I reward myself with that thing, I'm going to do the thing I'm not as excited about. You need first. the mini boss. Yeah, I've got to. Yes, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> You got you to get through the mini boss before you get to the boss. Got to fight all the snakes before I can get to the temple of the lizard or whatever. Yes. Yes. You can't have any pudding if you don't eat your meat, you know? That kind of thing. <laughs> yes. well, so you're saying paint the paint the rank and file first and then do your, your big uh, reward models later? Or, or whatever. Like if you've got something, how many times have you been in the middle of a project that you're working on and your head's actually been on a different project? You know what I mean? No, like, okay, so you're talking about something different. I thought you were talking about how you structure your project goals in sure. art painting. Sure, I, I do so all like, the the worst. I do all the worst stuff up front. Whatever, right. like whatever I define as the worst, I do that first. Right, and then I save the most fun stuff, the easiest stuff for the end. The what big I'm, splashy models that you just want to like just lavish attention on you yeah, yeah. the six characters you've made sure to include in every two thousand point list. Right, because that's how it's done. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and yes. it's the same <laughs> it's yeah. the same theory, right? It's the same theory, yeah. Tom, because in both cases, I've got a thing that I'm really excited about and jazzed about like this is what I want to go do, right? Yeah. And yeah. but before I can do that, I'm going to get this other stuff out of the way, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's just a good strategy I think to employ because you'll just push through that stuff and get it done. And that will then get you to the stuff you're really excited about. And if you're not an army painter, here's a tip, hot hot take. If you're not an army painter, stop painting high model count armies. Stop it. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, it's a great like, piece. 
Um, it, like if if it's not your bag, stop doing uh, Gloom Spike. Right. Put yeah. On. Don't get tempted by like a rules thing or a list you really like if you know that's not actually your personality. Like you mentioned, never painting a hundred figs or whatever. Not no, do like a horde again. Yeah. Exactly. I see a horde army outside. The only the only thing I've done in any high number recently that I've enjoyed was Damonettes because I love their like little supple life forms and they have very expressive faces. And I'm obsessed you play with your Sinesh. strengths. Yeah, that's, yes. that's what you like to do. And you're using your favorite color. I just want to. Throw right. that on top of this. Also true. Also yeah. true. But like somebody said, for example, when I was kind of working on my Slaves of Darkness Force, somebody was like, oh, you should uh, you should do Marauders because Marauders. Marauders are really good. And yep. Take 90 of those. Nope. That's not <laughs> happening. It's just not happening. Like, because even if, even if one, the sculpts are dumb, but that's fine. As we mentioned, Spire Tyrants are awesome. There's plenty yep. of replacement sculpts. Yeah. You could use Blood Reavers. Yeah. You could use whatever. Which is, by the way, another trick. If you don't like a particular sculpt and you're not going to be excited to paint it, find a replacement sculpt you are excited to paint. But anyways, even in that case, I'm just not jazzed for that. Nothing about playing Marauders interests me, right? So I'm just not going to play that. That's not my thing. That's not what I'm doing. Yeah. That's not what I'm painting. I'm trying to escape reality, not just paint what I am in real life. <laughs> a man with uh, giant muscles and a bondage harness. I mean, that's just looking in the mirror. I'm looking to create something that's unreal and sure. a good guy. I'm trying to paint a good guy on That's that's why you only paint good guys. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That all checks out. So yeah, I think there's a there is a value in knowing yourself, right? Like if you're somebody who spends a lot of time who is a slower painter, then look at ogres or stormcast or iron jaws or you know, there's plenty of good elite armies in out in the uh in, in the field right now. Just play one of those. Right. Like there's gotta be something in there you like. And if you don't like any of those, I'm sure we'll get the Giants release soon. I was just going to say that. There's your six regiments right there. Yep. Six bases, six Giants. That's my army. Done. I mean, I mean, for me, like, it's funny. I was sitting here and I'm like, okay, I have I have these 40 Dispossessed left. And then I have another 30 Volkites with dual axes. 10 more Oryx with shooters. And I probably need to do another... Mm, probably 20 Arcanauts, you know, thinking through what I need to get Ooh. done for my army. And like, I've just rattled off like 150 models. Yeah. And like, I'm like, okay, yeah, it checks out. But that's, that's my personality. Like, yeah, I don't you, mind. you actually enjoy painting these big hordes to a degree. Like you're, you're, it's actually something you're pretty good at. You sit down with a 30, you grind them, then you grind another 30 of something else. Right. Right. Yeah. And like, I don't mind doing that at all. Like I have 80, mm -hmm. uh, 80 ghost boys that sitting over there i'm just i'm chomping on the bit to assemble like i like big horses Horses don't chomp they champ i don't care i'm just correcting you because it's fine thank you Do i appreciate that yeah it's I don't champing care. at the bit um uh i'm chomping though because i'm a human not a horse yeah uh, clean plate club <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, so but you got to know what you like that's the, like right. that's the challenge here um and for me, like, I know I'm going to paint an individual model to a lower quality than, like, Vince or Sam. Like, I'm, I just am because that's who I am. That's, that, like, that's, that's what I enjoy. And so if I, could, if I do, like, horde armies, then what ends up happening is that, like, it feels better. It than, balances out, too. Yeah, absolutely. Because, it does. yeah, yep. People like, like yeah. mass quantity has its own quality. That's not, yeah, that footprint that you throw down. Yeah. And really, I just want to bring the model to life. And that is kind of a relative term for everybody. Yeah. You know, if Tom is satisfied with his work, I'm happy. Painted miniature is always better than, you know, you've brought it to life well enough. If you feel good about it. And so I do horde armies because that's what I like. That's in general what I like. And also from a play style, it's what I prefer. Like, I, I, I don't want to lose on bodies. Like, that's just all pass. Um, but, uh, yeah, so just you need to figure out what you like. That's the key here. Yep. And, you know, just sort of a note on something that was said in the comments with a bunch of people talking about, like, using contrast and stuff like that. Don't ever let anybody hobby shame you into a particular way to paint. That's right. a bunch of crap. I remember when airbrushes were new. Yeah. Uh, people sitting around, oh, that's cheating. Oh, I would never use an airbrush. And now look at Were you oh, hanging out in like, oh, I like these Island. airbrushes now. I think I fancy me uh, an airbrush. <laughs> yeah, and those same people are, oh, contrast, wah. Something, Games Workshop did anything. Ah. 
I mean, I'm I'm going to be honest. It. <laughs> right. I'm going to be honest. Uh, Vallejo metal color with an airbrush is literally the best thing ever. Sure. Um, and if you're playing in a heavy uh, metal Dude, army, yeah. like just do that. Yeah, get like yes, I you, I could get a stormcast army painted in an afternoon if I wanted to be fast with just like metal color and that kind of stuff. Yeah, check out the anti zenithal video I did with tabletop minions. Yep. I know anti zenithal is not a real word, and nolidial light. Uh, I, I learned that. I didn't go to art school. I I did work instead, and you paid thousand dollars for a degree to learn the word nolidial. Congratulations! But a rose by another name would just as be just as instructive. So check out the video. And color block your models, use the airbrush, use the three-dimensional aspects of the figure to control the angles. You get your gold and silver on your dwarves, airbrush it upwards with a kind of a browned out black, maybe a wash. And yeah, everything's just shaded in at once. Yep. Oh, it's true. Yeah, there's absolutely zero wrong with those kind of techniques. Use what you need to use because any painted model is better than an unpainted model assuming you don't just literally like dip it in house paint like you know what i mean people okay <laughs> you know what i mean like yes we all know the joke of like the old those those the pictures that get shared around of like the horrible space marine that's just got like a, a half inch of paint on him oh, yes. yeah but that's not what people are actually painting right that's not no. actually what happens um any painted model that you're that you're reasonably controlling your paint on even mildly is better period right right all yeah. right and like here's the deal folks my two nine-year-olds mm. can put contrast on models and it actually looks pretty good yeah like i'm excited to show y'all some of what my uh, my daughter is doing and it's like comments. if she can do that y'all can do that yeah right um and here's another tip here's a hot take um find art if you don't like painting and like what is the biggest like obstacle for you is painting and you don't really care as much about like the theme or 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 whatever for your army find armies that paint easily right okay so like if, if you want to limit that go grab sylvaneth and uh, some contrast and have a heyday because that the wild wood contrast paint on those trees looks fantastic and it'll mm -hmm. paint literally in an afternoon uh, the same thing with the metal color, airbrushing, and stormcast. It'll literally, like, it'll paint itself. Or heavy, uh, yeah. paint, like, or heavy, you know, an airbrush and heavy, um, and like a KO ship-based army. Where you're just, like, painting huge panels, knock it out, get it done. Yep. Absolutely. No, it's a good point. Like, certain armies paint a lot easier than others, right? Right. Uh, Sylvaneth. Nice, easy, relaxing paint job because it's all high texture, natural colors, woods, takes well to washes, ink, stuff like that. Stormcast or, or ogres or anybody big like that where you can just kind of like do a lot of work with just your airbrush and make that be most of the work. Right. Uh, those kind of things. Stay away from, you know, say like doing something with complicated zinch with 72 different colors and beads and bejangles and bejewels everywhere. Zangor. Zangor are not. Yeah, the uh, nightmares. Uh, yep. Uh, uh, fire slayers are actually pretty bad detail wise. Um, the new elves are going to be nightmares as well. Um, <laughs> yep. I mean, like it's just it's it's what those are. But things like ogres will be quick. Stormcast, Sylvaneth, uh, even uh, even with contrast, uh, Iron Jaws paints up really quick. Sure. Uh, my son's doing those right now. Um, yeah. Um, not everything has to be a different color as well. On some of these more detailed models. I've got four colors mainly, right? I'm working up to a progression, up to a highlight, but when I was painting my Infinity Army, there's a lot of smaller, can I say that word? There's a lot of smaller uh, pieces on the models and you're tempted to just pick every little individual yeah. box of equipment in a different tone. Just paint it all red. Just paint all the same thing. Right. Gloves, belts, boots, yep. uh, eyes, base, like... Yep. Those those elves, you know, that they're really detailed. You can take them far, but what if every bit of armor work was just like a creamy white? Like like if it's an Eldar yeah. made of wraith bone, right? Right. This, yep. this can be completely monochromatic if I want it to be. Yep. That's that's actually Sam it's so neat. Uh, that's where I find myself with my fire slayers. Because I made this yeah. mistake of of having both my silver and golds. And yeah. so like so like I actually have like bracelets that are like that are like three layer bracelets where you can actually tell there's like an outer like ring. And so like, yep. this is actually silver and then I have to do my golds around it. 
and like all of that could just be one metal color like mm -hmm. if i wasn't insane um and vince you asked what's taking me so long that's what's taking me so long sure is, is, is mixing in those like two-tone metal colors and stuff like that because that's what i that's what i want out of the unit but the reality is is that you don't have to do that all yeah, metal you don't have to too. yeah all right good stuff so and then i'd say follow that and something we've said here ha has will hopefully get you out of your jam and get you towards your painted army on the table yep. i think uh Find content producers, you know, and you guys alluded to this. Find content producers that you can fill the airways with. Other people who are excited about the hobby and 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 will inspire you to do more of that. Right. There That's are good. tons of content producers out there. Um, find them and listen to them. Uh, Sam obviously does work. Uh, we have stuff. Paint along with Sam every Tuesday and Thursday from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Central Time. Tuesday through Thursday. Yep. There you go. Samson Arts go. on Twitch. You, you yep. didn't stream today because you were nice enough to sit here with the show for us. But no, normally, it's Tuesday through Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> like, just having something like that regularly where you get together and, and, and do that, where this is the time I paint, the time when I'm watching Sam and you're painting along with him. Boom. Good way to go. Yep. I've been painting to uh, battle reports on Rerolling Ones and Gorilla Miniature Games. Uh, yeah. Hours of that stuff out there. It just helps to fill the room with... Uh, chatter that's related to the the sub the task at hand right mm -hmm. yep yep that's good uh oh uh <laughs> uh thomas says uh sam what's your take on the new big elf guy on techless we actually mentioned it earlier but go oh, ahead oh man yeah i uh i'm trying to find the silver lining and just say things that i like about it so i've got kind of similar gripes to everybody else um things i like about it though are I like that the the monster has a humanoid face. I think that harkens back to very like 16th century woodcuts of demons. You know, mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. it's a man with like a monkey's hands and like a cow's udder. It's a demon. Um, you know, it's like this like living sphinx and techless uh, floating around like a Castlevania boss. Yes, I'm okay with that. I like the the high fantasy. I want to see it just cranked up to 11 mm -hmm. these days. Um, I don't like that. Yeah, it's obviously the Toralon. Like, just, body. just flipped. When you point, you guys pointed yeah. that out, and I was like, "Ah, God." <laughs> <laughs> but there's, I don't know. A lot of the time, when you see the model in your hands, it changes your opinion on it. For me, the Star Drake, I didn't like it. Then I, I got it in in my paws, and now I do like it. So yeah, it can take on a different feel when it's it's in person. You have to wonder how much of that is that they, they oftentimes take these pictures of these big models from like the worst angle. We were talking they about have, that the start, Yeah, right? they want to level it with the base. Um, yeah. You can replace techless or testless. It depends on what side of the equator you're on, I guess. Replace them with some another model if you don't like him. Use the Invisible Man. You got a whole mm -hmm. like Invisible Man thing going on with that, Just that the monster. one character or... Mm -hmm. God, yeah, there's... There's things you can do. So yeah, there's my take on the model. Use a different one. Yes, <laughs> I guess yeah. that was what started this. Mm -hmm. But the, well, the take home point is yes, I'll the light of Eltharion is a very good model. Yeah, <laughs> there you yeah. go. Yeah, that's that's the general thought on Techless. I'm just yeah, I'm just trying to enjoy the ride, man. Anytime there's cool models coming out as a painter, I'm generally enthused. There's always something within that release I'm gonna like. I'm not gonna play that army. I right. wanted to. I was like excited, but. Yeah. Too much just elves. We gotta wait for the next thing. I'm also, just, also I'm, giants. Release I'm, the giants. I'm waiting. I'm in holding pattern. We'll see. Tom will end up collecting this army. Hanging under yep, your expectations are under the basket. I like I, I know. wait till it's piled up, man. That's what I did with uh yeah. the last two editions of 40k and I still haven't gone back. <laughs> I, I'm I giving this a year. I still don't like it. Um mm -hmm. Vince, but hey, I'm playing been... AOS, all right. So and we're glad you are, Sam. Hell yeah. Uh, Vince, you said that about Ideneth, and I still haven't come around on them. Uh, that's know. fine. I, I didn't realize just how fishy they would be. You're going to get these, Tom. They're just high elves again. These will be in your wheelhouse. I know where this is going. Maybe. I have foreseen it. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what the rest of the range looks like, and we'll see what the rules look like. Sure. All right, folks. Uh, with that, we're going to shut it down. Thank you very much, everybody. Today, sorry for the audio issues at the beginning. I don't know why 
the default setting was like it was and was making a little whistle. I'll go back and listen. Hopefully it's not too terrible. I will link in the description when the whistling stops <laughs> later tonight. Uh, but at any rate, thank you all very much for watching. Thank you, Sam. Yeah. Hey, it was great to hang out with you guys. I met you. It's cool to chat with Tom because I watch the show every week. And I understand the references now when you guys refer to like Caribbean ogres. Mm -hmm. And think you talk about things that happened like a year ago. I was like, I was there. <laughs> I remember. So yeah, yeah See, big thanks how, to you guys, man. It's cool to be part of it. That's how we create participation with our audience and buy-in. Just it's running jokes. Oh yes. yeah, man. There you go. All right, folks. With that, we'll say thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, hit the like button. That helps a lot of other people find the show. The more people hit like, the more other people get, the more this gets recommended. So thank you very much. Please hit like, subscribe, do all that fun YouTube related stuff. It is really, really, really appreciated when you do so. Uh, more than you know. Four more years of Warhammer Weekly. That's at right. At least. At least. We'll be there. Uh, it's fine. Uh, at any rate, <laughs> thank you all very much. We appreciate it. We'll see you next time.